This is just straight up beautiful. My name is Otto Gori and I recently sold my Mercury Cougar XR7 from the year 1971. I've done this so I can start a new project car, this beautiful blue Mercury Cougar Eliminator from the year 1969. I've always wanted to assemble a car completely by myself and this car appeared and it was a great opportunity for me. Last week I managed to assemble the crankshaft and camshaft in the, in the engine block and I plan to continue the assembly of the short block on this video. We're gonna start by fitting the piston rings to the pistons, of course, that's the first step on the manual. But there's a small problem. So the manual showed me to check the ring gap, but does not specify which is the ring gap that I have to set. Also, on the section specific to my engine, there's also no clear indication of what is the measurement that I should be following. So I'm gonna check the other manuals that I have and see. So the Canadian manual from the same year, uh, this is for basically diagnosing uh, piston problems. Also does not list in for me which is the gap. It does mention these ones, but I'm fairly sure that this is not what I'm actually looking for. It does orient me to check the applicable shop manual for the specifications. It's also fun to see that some of the information cross references like this information of the placement of the rings is also present in the engine manual. It's the same diagram in here and in here. Yeah, good to check. Uh, the manual there is this guy over here. In combination with a small handbook that is over here. So yeah, let's try to find it. Found it. This is my engine, 428, and these are the measurements that I need. This, this, and this. Okay. So the assembly manual also tells that this feature in the connecting rod has to be pointing to the outside of the engine. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna assemble all the connecting rods to the pistons so I can start IDing them. Because now, since we are fitting the pistons to the cylinders, I'm gonna number the cylinders and now every single one of those pistons will belong to one of them specifically. Because once we start grinding the piston gaps, they belong specifically to one and they cannot be exchanged anymore. So yeah, let's go for it. The first step is just to push the piston pin through the connecting rod and pistons. Uh, the bushings on the connecting rods were already installed on my piston rod, so I didn't have to worry about this. Following the installation, you actually place the retainers to hold the piston pins in place.
From here we start the fitting process of the piston rings to the cylinder bars. Now, for the piston rings, what we're gonna do is that we have to be in between point 0.1 or point 0.2. If we are below point 0.1, we can use a small uh, disc grinder to adjust it. If we are above point 0.2, this is a bad news for me because then I have to order a new uh, ring set base. Uh, okay. We'll just first check if nothing is passing through point 0.2. Oh good. So now let's see if we are below point one because if that's the case we need to just one. Pass it. Pass it. Big one. Oh this guy is adjusting. This one passes. So only do one. Yeah. So let's just first make sure that it's not going through point two. No. 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 So you're good. I don't know if it is bigger than it should be. So the same for point one. If any one of them needs adjustment, close through, close through. Good, so only this guy here needs to be adjusted. Now, the order of installation of the rings is the expander ring on the bottom, a top rail, and the rail is going to be indexed, so one gap pointing to one side and another gap pointing to the opposite side. Bottom this morning. The top ring.
And that's it. All the pistons have their rings. They are properly indexed already. Next video, we're gonna install the pistons on the cylinders and connect the camshaft and crankshaft with the timing chain. So, yeah. See you guys next time.